certain parts of the budge's plumage, they give off a reflective glow. Sexiest male. Especially if he can fight, too. With his rival dispatched, the male can now get down to the serious business of wooing the female. Not only do budgies have highly reflective UV markings, some parts of their plumage actually become fluorescent. Their necks and heads in particular. The feathers don't lie. To make sexy feathers, the male must be healthy and parasite free. These markings announce, my genes are great, choose me. And if she does, he treats her to dinner by regurgitating food into her mouth. Over a few days, she'll lay about six eggs that will hatch in just a couple of weeks. She feeds her blind, naked chicks a rich, milk-like liquid. They grow rapidly. Within 12 days, their wing feathers come through. And after only four weeks, they're almost ready to leave the nest. Incredibly, these chicks will be ready to breed in just 60 days after hatching. It's a super quick turnaround to get the young out of the nest while the going is good. But it could be all over in an instant. At six feet, the Parenti is Australia's largest lizard. tireless predator, it covers great distances in search of food. The Parenti tracks its prey by sight and by detecting scent molecules that it picks up on its tongue. In the air, they're not nearly so vulnerable. Synchronized squadrons fly low between the mulga trees. The colors on their backs camouflage them against the grasses. Where the budgies go, the birds of prey follow. Kites, falcons, harrier hawks. Each hunter looks for a weak link.
But it's not always life and death for Australia's parrots. Galahs seem to have plenty of time for clowning around. In some years, budgies breed up into such numbers that they become, for a time, Australia's most numerous parrot. Accounts by the early settlers tell of flocks so big that they blackened the sky. But the good times can only last for so long. And as the country dries out again, breeding comes to a halt. Having raised several generations, the budgies disperse, resuming their nomadic life in the desert, waiting for the next big rains. Whenever that may be. In contrast to the unpredictable droughts of the interior, the seasons along the southern edge of Australia are far more regular. In winter, Antarctic blasts of cold air bring snow to Australia's highest mountains. Wombats can forage in any weather. But it's not great weather for parrots. There is one that manages to survive above the snow line. Green rosellas fuel up on alpine berries against the winter blizzards. Down at sea level, the cold fronts bring gale force winds. Great for surfers, but treacherous for almost anything else. If you're a rock parrot, you must learn to like your plants heavily salted. Living in the salt spray zone is not an easy life, but these hardy parrots are tough customers. Things get a little easier in the nearby coastal heath. This environment is richer, attracting gang-gang cockatoos. Like most cockatoos, gang-gangs are left-footed, gripping onto their wind-blown perch with their right leg while holding the seed pod with their left. Yellow-tailed black cockatoos also favor their left foot when tackling the large seed-bearing cones of the banksia tree. It's a tricky operation that combines brute force to slice through the tough exterior and a delicate touch to extract and shell the seeds that lie within. But the very plants that these parrots need to survive must be burned in order to regenerate. All this takes is a thunderstorm. And the Australian bush burns astonishingly fiercely. Banksia fruits need intense heat to release their seeds. Hakia cones split. Gum nuts drop to the forest floor. Oil in the eucalyptus leaves is as explosive as gasoline. No other continent burns so dramatically as Australia. Some fires consume millions of acres. But within hours, currawongs are poking through the ashes. 
and crimson rosellas that survived the inferno are feasting on roasted eucalypt seeds. Just a few days later, eucalypts are sending out green shoots.